Hello everyone! This is Hachiri, and we're back in FTB Interactions. Now, this is going to be a very, very short episode, probably. Uh, I said I was going to go over setting up a Blast Furnace to work with AE. Um, it's been taking a long time to get parts made, get uh, materials gathered, whatnot. On top of that, I've had uh, a lot of work issues going on, so I haven't been able to really get things done as efficiently as I would like. Um, just to kind of show, though, because uh, those of you who watch my streams would know that I've been working on building a rather large blast furnace area. But um, we're just going to do a quick, small, itty-bitty system for this demonstration. So. We have ourselves a nice little setup here. Now, this setup you should be familiar with. This simply sorts hot ingots into the freezer and everything else into the chest. We have two imports here, one for the freezer, one for the uh, off product chest. And we have this setup. And this is basically the key of getting a blast furnace working with AE in volumetric flasks. Okay, so what this is, is this is the buffer from volumetric flask and it works directly conjection or can directly with the volumetric interface and how it works is you see when you mouse over it, you see a bunch of tanks. Okay. Um, it also has a item inventory. All right. And essentially what happens with this thing is it shoves all of the items and fluids and stuff in here and then you just take a conduit and it goes to its respective place so we got a couple of recipes here we got one for tungsten steel and we got one for red alloy and uh, we're just gonna test these out we're just gonna fire up one of each I'm gonna do the red alloy first And uh, we'll just um, we'll create 10. Yeah, it's going to take a few. And then we queue that up. And if we come over here, we'll see the items going in and disappearing. But if you take a look over here, it's, it's running pretty quick. In fact, I think it might have actually already finished. Yeah, it already finished. Okay, <laughs> that went a little faster than I um, than I expected. Let's uh, let's just do two stacks. We need rather alloy anyway. So it's creating the two stacks. And as you see, it's going through pretty quickly. And it's putting the fluids and stuff in here. So like you can watch it, it's just going in as fast as uh, it can and processing the stuff. And it's a really nice system. And that's basically how you set up on demand with the blast furnace on AE. Um, take a look at this. This is gonna take a little bit longer. So uh, we'll let that run. It looks like the holdup is actually this. We'll let that run. And the other thing is it works the same way with normal stuff too. So if we were to take say tungsten steel, for example, and I wanted to do 10, I can just queue it up like so and start it and it would just put the items in the blast furnace in fact if I go over here now as you see the items are already here and it'll just take its time and do whatever needs to be done and this will slowly fill up because it's apparently giving the uh, 
tungsten steel priority. And why am I I'm running out of power? Let's stop this for a second. There we go. And it's processing the, uh, the stuff. And as you see, in this case, because it was tungsten, it went ahead and just put it in here. But uh, yeah, so that's basically how this works, is you build the buffer, which is part of volumetric flasks, right here. This is the recipe for the buffer. Um, and then you place it down, you hook your conduits to it, you set up a volumetric flask and uh, or volumetric interface, and go from there. Now. If you don't have conduits, I think any type of pipe can work. Like you could probably stick it directly to this. I don't know if this auto pulls in, it might. But uh, yeah, you can just stick it there and uh, that's pretty much it. It's a really straightforward way of doing it. And uh, I think I'll pretty much wrap things up for this one. Um, Later on, I will get another uh, episode in. I don't know what we're going to cover. Um, we've gotten quite a bit done. I do want to finish the mega system with the load balancing, but uh, I may cross this road here in a little bit. The other thing is I need to automate unstable mana and I'm debating how I want to go about that because um, we're going to need a lot of unstable mana. So I'm going to kind of figure those out and uh, figure the power out and then we'll probably come back for that. Uh, I'll probably put out another episode today for that but I wanted to at least get this one done. Uh, I apologize for it being so short but yeah that's this is pretty much how you automate a, a blast furnace. You you can set up any form of system uh, to filter for hot ingots and such. In my case, I'm using um, integrated dynamics. And in a previous episode, I pretty much covered how I built this with the or dictionary filtering. Um, and just as a uh, reminder they do need to connect the chests because for some reason it breaks when connected to uh, Greg Tech input hatches buses etc but yeah so that is that that is automation with a buffer and uh, yeah we'll wrap it up here and I will come back probably with power next I just got a whole bunch of Nequadria, and I'm kind of sorting that out right now, figuring out what I'm going to do with that. So, um, we'll, uh, we'll cover that next, I think. So with that, this is a short episode. Have a wonderful day, and we'll talk later. Bye-bye.